Okay. Okay, okay we're, we're back. back. <laughs> Folks, we're shaking the table. <laughs> okay. Okay, so this last one, Lisa uh, saw this as I was kind of unpacking things. And this also came from Habitat, and it is Jane Baxter, uh, her sampler from 1824. Woo! This is by Primitive Traditions, which is one of my favorites, and I've um, sort of stalked trying to find this, um, this any of them by this one. I have another one called, I think, Good and Plenty that I love, and I, I really want to start. But I, I do think that their patterns are phenomenal. They I, are. The one I was stitching at New West Retreat, Abigail Colby, that uh -huh. one's by Primitive Traditions. Primitive traditions oh, as well. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. What I like in this one, it has this combination of that that really pretty dark blue mm -hmm. and browns and golds and kind of olive greens. It's it's really stunning. It's gorgeous. So so that's my haul. Oh, yeah, that's my haul. <laughs> so 30, 30 minutes in and we're done with haul. <laughs> we might have a problem. I, I don't have a problem. I, I, well, I don't think it's a problem either, but it might be viewed as a problem. It, it could be viewed as a problem. Okay, so okay. I, have, I have two finishes. Can I show those next? Yeah. So this is Sabrina by Black... Uh, I keep saying Blackbird Designs <laughs> by Mirabilia. Mm -hmm. And um, I've posted this several times on Instagram. I have a finish. It's a this, stunning, stunning finish. So this is for my niece. And um, it's a bridal conversion. She got married two years ago, so I thought, well... It's time to finish this one. It was part of my Stitch 9 challenge. And I'm just going to pan over to both of these um, to show you a little bit of the up close. What I love about um, how Lisa stitched it is it has this illusion. So you, there's an illusion bridal tool. And this looks like it has illusion bridal tool on it just by how the threads are Oh, done. yeah. All the, and all the um, beads, right? Yeah, so all the beads. very heavy with the beads. You can see there's little teeny, like there's treasures too. I'm so sorry uh -huh. if I'm kind of going between the two, but you, it's very sparkly. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. Thank you. It's beautiful. So that's she's, my first finish. She's going to be so excited. Yeah, Does she it. know it's coming? I don't know. She sometimes watches my videos, I think. She knows I'm stitching it. Mm. Um, and then I had showed this on an earlier video a long time ago, and... Um, I want to say it was probably like my second video maybe. Mm -hmm. And I had, um, it was at the culture and it took quite a while. In fact, I'm going to just kind of stand up here. I'll show you a quarter of it. But it was at the culture for a while. And then it got, it, she finished it and I picked it up. My son picked it up and brought it to me. Um, and then I put the binding on it. But I'm just going to show you some of the cool things she did on this. It's fun. Now, this is not necessarily my normal color palette, but I'll say that when I stitched this, it was about this time of year when I quilted yeah. this because, you know, you just crave color. I get tired of the landscape, and actually, you know, we have a lot of evergreens here, so at least we have that, but I love spring. Spring is my favorite season here. It uh, looks like a lemonade margarita. Yes. <laughs> oh, that sounds good. <laughs> it does sound good, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it does. So those are my two finishes. Cool. Now, oh, I have a previous finish. Oh, I can yeah. show this. A lot of people are stitching this. I see it on Instagram as well. This is a Blackbird design. Um, it was a release from last year. Something heart. I can't remember what it is. But this is on a... Um, the dyer is no longer in business. I don't remember what is it's called. Is that a 40 count? No, this is a... Oh, I don't know what it is. I said this it's is it's a fairly small. I don't know what it is. Is that lady dot on the back? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's pretty. It's it's really pretty. I and love the color. It's, it's I like the yes. deep rich color. Yes, and so um, the Blackbird Designs ladies they they poked pins in with little beads at the end, and you know, in my house that stuff would fall out immediately. So I just used a bicone bead and a little seed bead on top and um, stitched it on instead. So it's it's permanent. But plus, this is, you know, for two days after, yeah, after Valentine's, Valentine's Day. Day. So. Yeah. So that's my previous finish. Whips, did you have some whips you wanted to show? Um, I have just a couple whips. So I showed, I did a whip parade um, last weekend. So I don't have a whole lot more to show. I did get a little bit more done on um, Autumn on Lazy Bear Mountain. And I remember I was talking about, I had hand dyed this because I really wanted the gold to show up. And so I do have a little bit of the moon 
um, stitched on there. So just a very little bit mm -hmm. done. It was it was a crazy week. So um, I drove home from snow into more snow and a snowstorm, and uh, in all my thirty five plus years working in government, um, only one other time did they actually close the office, and they closed the office. It was it was really bad. It was a hot mess around here. It was a hot mess, and and then the. Um, even the next day, we had a really late start, and a lot of people, even last Friday, we still had people who could not get out of their driveway, so yeah. we had a lot of people working from home. Um, I have one more whip that I was going to share. Um, it's kind of in the middle stage of what it's going to be. This is a big ball of um, fabric that's been stitched around batting, and it's going to be a jelly roll or a jelly roll rug that's what yep. they're called yep. um i totally forgot to bring the pattern with me i'm sorry i will i'll post a link down below on mine but this uh will turn into a rug basically you take this after you've stitched the batting in between um the fabric you start stitching it on itself and you just go round and round and round and it will become a rug and so maybe by next Next video, mm. I might have a rug to show you. Um, I don't know how long it took me to do this. Use an entire jelly roll um, because I worked on it just a little bit here, a little bit there, but I would say it was maybe a solid three hours to just to stitch this, and it will probably be another solid three or four hours <laughs> to do that. But in in um, you know putting that all together, having a really nice rug, and if you go out on Instagram, you will find a bazillion pictures of the different ones. A lot of people do these in batiks, and they're stunning. Yes. They are just stunning. I've done mine in um, flannels and in the earthy tone colors that match my house. This is going to go under a rocking chair that I have that... <laughs> Aww. Tends to scratch my hardwood floor, so it needs a something underneath it that's soft, but doesn't it? But that's all I have today for for, uh, for whips. Yep. Is that a um, is that going to be an oval or a round? This one's going to be an oval. Um, they do round. They have uh, a round pattern. They also have one where they just go back and forth and do um, just a straight. So it's it's like, oh, like a, a squ it's a rectangle. It's one? a rectangle, right? Yeah, oh. you can. You can do that. Uh, I don't recall the name of the gal, but again, if you go on, even if you do hashtag uh, Jelly Roll Along, I believe is what it is, uh, you will see, like I said, a bazillion pictures. There's videos out there on how to do them. Um, you probably will want to buy the pattern that has some helpful hints. Um, because I'm look, sorry, <laughs> I'm looking back and forth between these. Uh, it has some helpful hints about how you start and how you stop, and um, you will be dealing with a lot of bulk, so um, you'll you'll kind of want to have those helpful hints to, to move this along. One of them is, um, I, I think I can share this, is that you don't start where all of your bulk is on the inside of your sewing machine. You want the bulk on the uh, outside of the sewing machine. Yeah. Otherwise, you're going to have um, it all curled up, and you're going to be trying to force it through. Um, and that wouldn't be fun. So when you get yours done, I'll just learn from you. Okay. That. Sounds good. All right. So this is, um, besides my FFO, that's what I, the uh, Sabrina is what I stitched a good part of January. Mm -hmm. And it was part of the Stitch 9 Challenge. It was my first finish. All these other people like, I'm on finish number three. I'm like, I have 13,000 <laughs> stitches left on Sabrina. So it took me forever. I did work on um, the oh, English so Cottage pretty. Sampler. I was able to come down here, go across. I need to fill this in and put the Lazy Daisy stitches around here and then finish down here. And that will be done. So that one I have to mod, I have to just. Look at that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm sorry. Check that out. It's backstitch it's jail. It's backstitch. Backstitch prison. Hashtag backstitch prison. Oh, I don't know if you want to hashtag that. No, you probably <laughs> don't want to hashtag. This you never know so, what you're gonna get if you pick, pick the wrong hashtag. This is pretty. Is this on a like a 18 count? Yeah. I, so this was done 100 years ago. Well, not 100, but 20. Well, it started probably 27 years ago. Anyway. It's beautiful. Thank you. It's just. Where's that gonna go? I don't know. <laughs> it's gonna go in that sampler wall that you. Know, yes. You yes. Yeah. I've got to finish it first, and then I gotta wash it because it's dirty. It's like 26 years of grime. Mm. And then I started this. Oh, this I is, love this. Uh, I, I was itching to start this when I was stitching on Sabrina. This is In Friendship mm -hmm. by Plum Street. And it came out, I think it was a I think it was the Dying to Stitch Retreat um, gift in 2017, is my understanding. And then I just went to town on it because 
This is on oh. 40 count. I'm sorry, I'm not taking it off my Q-snap. It's on 40 count pearl barley. Oh, I love pearl barley. Yeah, if I can come a little bit closer. <sighs> and it's I, gorgeous. And this is the thread color palette. <laughs> my girl, Lord. I, I like the tray she has it on. It's it's stunning. <laughs> Oops. Here. So here. here. I can hold half and you hold half. Okay. okay. <laughs> and I've got some extra threads that I bought. Da -da. So this is a, this is the thread here. I'll show you the, the tray. My aunt painted this tray oh, in the seventies. <laughs> that would look so nice in my house. Isn't that pretty? <laughs> it is, a, and it's totally old school toll painting too. You know, just the all the stroke work and the. It's, oh, it, I love that. I yeah. love that color of red. Do you know what that color is called? Is it like a barn or a? I have no idea. Because it has, you know, there's a lot of dark and black in it. This is most likely oils. Oh. Okay. Well, I don't know. It could be acrylic. I don't know. Oh, that's pretty. I'd have to ask my Aunt Donna. I don't know. It's lovely. Thank you. That's that's it for whips for me. I have some plans. Do you have, you any have some plans? plans? Well, let's... Um... Well, can I just show you a couple things? Yeah, let's, okay. let's do plans. So, I just have this. This ah. one is... I know. Chessie and me, Esther Edison. Hashtag, oh. I have that. I have that. And this one is going to be on this... I think I showed this oh. last time. Yeah. This is on the um, fabric I got. I won from Victorian Motto. Mm -hmm. The colors are scrumptious. What count are you going to do that in? This is 40 count. 40 count? Yeah. Yep. And then the other one that was released at the same time as In Friendship from Paulette is called, this is Eli Ms. Bingley's Library. A lot of people have been stitching this. So I stitch, I'm going to stitch on pearl barley as well. So I had a piece that I bought from Acorns and Threads, and I cut it. So for this to fit on my Q-snap, 11 by 17, I have to cut it, well, at least that big, right, for it to fit on there. But I don't want to stitch it this way on my Q-snap, so I will stitch it this way, but I'm going to stitch it sideways. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Vonna. <laughs> Vanna. Vanna, Vanna. Vanna, Vanna. <laughs> yeah. It, um, I'll stitch it sideways. So my stitches will go the opposite direction than they normally go, but... Which way do you do yours? Do you do your... I know. There's a big thing about that right I, now, right? So, so I learned after I had started stitching that I do my backwards. Well, there's no backwards. Well... Actually, I was watching the, the stitching in hand that, that Priscilla and Chelsea were doing, and I think they do it, this, I'll call it the traditional or the standard way. But I think there's an advantage to doing that um, because you can see your stitches as you're stitching them versus stitching over your stitches. So I, I don't know if that makes sense, but you can see where you're going versus... Oh. Um, your your kind of your hand is kind of covering where you're going. Oh, so and, like if you're a left-handed, yeah, right or a hand, yeah, yeah if you're left-handed, you're yeah. You so I, th I think there is a slight advantage doing it one way. Although I've I've kind of already developed the habit, so I don't know if I want to stop and try to retrain the way I do it. I'm, I may do this because I'm still fairly new. Sure. Um, and I have to do the same thing with my knitting because when I purl, I twist my purl because I'm kind of self-taught. Did, so, you, did you see me going, I don't know what you're talking about? Because <laughs> I don't knit. In fact, you know, there's that, that uh, designer called Hokey, I call it Hokey Pokey Tell Me because I don't even know what it is. <laughs> so, so a purl stitch, I mean, there's a knit stitch, which is, is your standard knit stitch. And, and I'm a new knitter, so. Um, I'm but, a no knitter. But the, there's a purl, so the purl is like you're doing the opposite of a knit stitch, but you're doing it on the front without having to turn something around. And when oh. you do knits and purls, then you get a, a garter. But anyway, um, I I was frustrated with the way that people kind of showed you, so I kind of developed my own pattern. And what ends it up is it, it twists it around, and so it doesn't look exactly the same as what it mm. normally does. But I've done it for so long that I don't know that I can... Undo it. Undo it. But I really need to because then my patterns don't really look, or my, my results don't really look the same as um, they're supposed to. Although there actually is a stitch that looks like the one that I do when I twist my stitch. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway. It's the Lori stitch. <laughs> it's the Lori stitch. Squirrel. Squirrel. <laughs> down the path. Yep, down the path. So we do have, I think we've covered everything that's on the table here, except that we have another, a new segment. Mm -hmm. We both have a new segment, uh, except they're called something a little bit different. Yeah. So my segment is called What's in Lisa's Drawers. I'm going to check out What's in Lisa's Drawers. <laughs> And yours is called? 
Mine is called, um, let's see, what are we? Stash dot? Yeah, it's a stash dot. So, um, you want to go first? I'll, I'll go first. So, uh, I think I've mentioned I'm moving, um, my little small sewing room into another room in, in my home. Yeah, you're kind of over. I'm kind of over I'm, here. Yeah. Sorry, I've, I've kind of been off, off uh, camera here for, for Lisa. You got most of, like, your, most of your face was in. <laughs> It's new. We're, we're testing it out. But I'm moving from one room to the other. And uh, anytime you do that, particularly if you're kind of doing the, the Marie Kondo stuff, have you watched her stuff? No. So have you seen my hoarder hole here? <laughs> so, I, but I, she said, you, 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 you touch it. Stuff. And if you love it, then you keep it. Well, I love everything in my craft room. It's not going anywhere. Um, you know, I, I can't throw my washing machine out. My <laughs> Yeah, I threw out my bills. I threw out my, my treadmill. My bra. Oh, yeah, that would be the first to go, definitely. Yeah. Yep. So anyway, um, nobody else would like that, but you know, <laughs> that's true for me. <laughs> for me, they'd be like, "Oh, sister, you need to stay home." <laughs> um, <laughs> on that note, <laughs> uh, are we gonna cut that? Part I don't out? know. I think we should leave it in. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Um, okay. I have a story to tell. Do, can I tell a story? Yes. Go. You, you got the floor. Okay. So um, years ago, I used to go to a quilting retreat in Sisters, which is kind of how I ended up um, wanting to move there eventually. But my really good friend, Jan, um, has a log cabin mansion in, um, in Sisters. Mm -hmm. And uh, she has a long arm. I have a long arm. Uh, we had several friends who had long arms. And so we'd have a long arm retreat um, in Sisters, Oregon during quilt week and the first time I went down there I really didn't know anybody and I had only barely knew Jan I had met her at a show and uh, we had been emailing back and forth and she's like come on down you know I, I know you wanted to see the quilt show come on down and stay with me sorry I'm <laughs> I'm gonna sit on my hands I'm a hand togger all the people you'll be like I'm seasick <laughs> and mine will be like I can only see half of Lori's head <laughs> Anywho, so I'm down there with this group of ladies. There was probably about eight or ten of us, and we we were just having a grand old time. I mean, there was food everywhere. There might have been a little bit of wine. There might have been, um, but we were there the whole week. And you know, so we're talking business. We're talking, uh, you know, quilting business. We're talking quilting. We're talking stitching. We're talking, you know, families, kids, blah 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 blah. Anyway, her husband. Um, was always gone during the week. He he flew out every Sunday night and came back every Thursday night or something like that. And so he came home that Thursday night and he is so cool. He he made everybody dinner and he just an awesome guy, Ron, just an awesome guy. And so he kind of hung out with us a little bit. We're sitting around the fireplace and we're chit chatting. It's it's been a long day. We're drinking wine. You know, it's after dinner and more, um, more wine, more, more wine. Yeah. So yeah. so Ron, of course, having worked all day and having flown clear across country, he's like, okay, ladies, you know, good night. I'm going to bed. And so he he trots off in, into bed. And Jan, she kind of like looks like this, waits for the door to close. And then she reaches out and unsnaps her bra and she rips it out <laughs> and she flings it up. And she and it's a log cabin, so it has one of these enormous, large uh, stone fireplaces with these little things kind of sticking out. And her bra catches, <laughs> catches up, I mean like- 20 feet in the air. Not, well, about 10, 10 feet in, and none of us could reach it. She's like my height, I, I'm not even five foot tall. So <laughs> she flings it up, she goes, okay girls, the bras can come off, he's a, he's a man. <laughs> And, uh, and I laughed so hard. I thought, oh boy, I am in the right crowd. <laughs> right? But anyway, it was so funny. It was so funny. I will never forget. We don't let Jan forget. And she couldn't get it down. So the next morning, Ron, <laughs> Ron comes down. He's like, uh, what happened last and night? The, the bra is hanging from, yeah. Anyway, so sorry, squirrel sidetrack. But back to um, moving my craft room. So anytime you move something, you, you kind of, you know, pile everything up and, and you're, you're going through it and you're sorting and, and I'm trying to organize my stuff. I've got sewing, I've got knitting, I've got, um, uh, cross stitch, I have quilting, I have mm -hmm. stuff from my garment construction days, um, hairpin lace. I mean, all that stuff. So I'm trying to look through all, I know here I'm looking back and forth. I'm trying to look, I know, it's okay. Me too. <laughs> I'm trying to look through all of my, my boxes and stuff and it's like, oh, what's this? Do I need to sort it out? So my segment is a stash dive and um, I think it's going to be a regular segment because I have no idea what I'm going to find. This is 30, 40 years full of stuff. 
So um, I, when she opened the box, my jaw dropped and I'm like, what you got in there? <clears throat> so I'm going to do a few quick ones and then I have a few that are I'm miscellaneous. Gonna, I'm going to tip us a You're going to tip us? Okay. So it's a little bit easier for people to see. So this one, um, I have kind of resorted to containers. These are plastic containers. They're, oh my gosh. You I can saw get these this at, and I was like, mm. You can get these at Michael's. Um, or similar, similar places. I'll just take the... Yeah, a lot of times these are in the scrapbooking section. Yes, yes. Right? So you can put your 12 by 12 scrapbook paper in there. These are handy. Nice size to slide under the bed. But most... You're trying to, <laughs> you're trying to hide your stash from your Yeah, house. most quilt blocks are are no, no larger than 12 by 12. So they work really oh, great perfect. for when you have a flat quilt block that you do this. Anyway, so here... This is a mix of wool and cotton applique. Oh my gosh, I love this. I love this. And the designer's name is um, the Vintage Spool. She does a lot of similar similar stuff like this. This is called Enchanted Autumn. And it was a block of the month. I, I'm pretty sure you can still purchase this. Um, I did not purchase it with the fabric, so I have a lot of fabric stash that I'm going to use. I've seen it. She does have fabric stash. I, I do. I have, mm -hmm. I have stash. So this actually is a gentleman's shirt that I got from a thrift store. This is some wool. This is some leftover quilting fabric. And this is just a block that I've started. But um, just in here, um, we are fortunate that in, in the Washington, Oregon, Pacific Northwest area, we have Pendleton wool. And if you go down to the, the mill in store, they have big bins of wool that you buy by the pound and they're scraps. They're scraps like this. Isn't that gorgeous? Isn't that pretty? Oh my gosh. Oop, there we go. Here's the back side of it so you get a whole different look. Mm -hmm. So what I have in here is just a ton of Pendleton wool um, in, in so these colors, you know, the browns, the burgundies, cranberries, golds, etc. Um, I have some flannel in there. Flannel can read as um, as wool as well. I'm not sure I'm gonna pull everything out. Maybe just a handful of more scraps. So, so there was that. And of course, every time you pull something out, it's like, oh, I want to stop and stitch that. <laughs> <laughs> See, I I came to the cross stitch world ready to be squirreled. And, and and ready to be a serial starter. You might be the master squirrel. I don't know. I, I might be. I don't know. So there is that one. Um, the next one is a tin I have. Oops. I need to put that down there. I'm going to lose it. Um, you want to take care of that for me, Lauren? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Just, <laughs> this might just go over in my stack. <laughs> oh, I see. Just you kidding. Had, just you had kidding. an ulterior motive. Um... I used to belong to a local quilting club, club called Little Joe's, and that's from Joe Morton. She is a quilt designer, and she also has fabric lines. And this is just a few blocks from one of her books. Um, or actually, this was from a club that wasn't from a book. These are tiny. So, show the, you got to show the back. The, oh. the piecing is amazing. So one of the things that you learn through Joe Morton is how to piece something very small. So the middle square in here is an inch. Um, and then like this little tiny one in here in the middle is a quarter inch. That's crazy. <clears throat> show, can you um, show these guys too? Oh, yeah. So there's the back. There's the back. Perfectly pieced. There's the, the front. And like I said, this is a quarter inch. These are about an inch. But the interesting part is she has a method to clip your seams when you have a lot of seams. There's obviously a lot of seams here. And if you're a quilter, whether you're a hand quilter or a long arm quilter, you know that having bumps in your quilt top where you have a lot of fabric joints, they, they can catch in your hopping foot and um, you get less than desirable results. Sometimes you can actually even rip your fabric. But, um, or if you're a hand quilter, you just, it's, you can't needle through it. So she has this method. These are absolutely flat. These don't feel, uh, and that's four pieces of fabric together. They don't feel any wider than, um. Oh, they, wow. They're, yeah, yeah, there's like, and these are perfectly pieced. So once you learn how to piece like this, piecing anything else, piece of cake, piece of cake. So she does the really warm, wonderful, um, uh, reproduction colors that I like that you've seen in a lot of well you've probably mm -hmm. seen look at that 
They look like thimbleberries, fabrics, kind of, don't they? Yeah, thimbleberries had a very similar color line, although uh, Lynette from Thimble, Lynette Jensen, she would um, she would mix in a lot of blues and, and, oh, and kind of true. pinks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these are really the um, more earthy, autumn, autumn-y colors. Autumnal. Autumnal. Autumnal? Autumnal. 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 Okay, so what's the next one? Ah, oh, the next one. So... <clears throat> Oh, Most yes. of you know um, Alma and um, Barb, Barb mm -hmm. from from Blackbird. Thank you, Blackbird. Not Designs. to be mistaken for Mirabilia. <clears throat> Not to be mistaken. <laughs> nope, nope. So you know them because they are fantastic uh, mm -hmm. cross stitch designers. Well, I actually came to cross stitch through Blackbird Designs because they're also quilt designers, and um, I am a longtime fan of their quilts. Um, and, and that's how I stumbled upon the cross-stitch world. I mean, I was aware of it, but that's how I really got interested because I was looking for something. I don't have the entire um, picture of the quilt. This is actually just one block of the quilt. And uh, this entire box here holds all of the oh. fabric for the quilt. And it's called Birds of a Feather. Mm -hmm. um, I would just hold up, you know, Gorgeous. again, the browns, the greens. Those of you who I know aren't, these aren't your colors, you're probably getting tired of them, but this, I just love these. But this has like the greens and it has some reds, uh -huh. which is what I love. And then they throw in that interesting blue. That yeah, it's sort of a, almost a confederate gray. You know how it's like a blue, green, gray Yeah, it could be color. Or it's, it's, I look at it and I think it's like a dark robin's egg. Yeah. It just, it has, yep. it has a teal undertone, I think is what makes it that kind of interesting blue yeah. color. That um, I have, it was a block of the month. I have all of the blocks. Oh, show that block. Show oh. this one. Oh, this one, oh, I'm, I'm telling you, so pretty. But the colors. Fantastic. So, and this is all applique. Um, I'm probably going to do the freezer method of applique on here. But you were talking about, you want to start learning to do applique. Some needle turn. Some needle turn. Mm -hmm. I've, I've done needle turn. Needle turn is not the method for me, but a lot of people really, really love needle turn. Um, I think if you get it, well, when you get it, you get it. But if it's, but it's arduous to sort of time to learn, right? Yeah. So it's hard to get your curves, the dips and the... It, it's kind of where you, you like to spend your time. Um, so if you do uh, the method with the freezer paper, what you're doing is you're cutting out the freezer paper and the shape and you're cutting about a quarter inch. Well, no, you're, you're cutting it exact and you're cutting your fabric a quarter inch bigger. You iron the freezer paper because there's some mm -hmm. wax on it and it sticks to it. And then you use starch and, and you kind of wet the edges and then you, you turn the edge and iron it down. Right. And so what you're doing is you're pre-shaping it and then when you're laying it down, you're just doing a whip stitch. So I'll you're probably will say, I like needle turn applique and mm -hmm. then I'll try that and I'm like, <laughs> No, I'm well, doing the freezer paper method. Yeah. I, I always recommend everybody try and figure out what what works for them. Right. Um, for me, doing that ahead of time and then laying it on there and just you know going to town, I really like that. Okay, so the next two are um, our miscellaneous boxes. We never know <laughs> what we're going to find in here. The stash dive surprise. This is stash dive. So I think most of these are wool, um, and I think there's oh look there's. There's a couple of hat recipes. <laughs> they're recipes. They're, 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 they're hat recipes. They're <laughs> hat patterns. Well, they are recipes. I mean, it's a set of instructions it, it to create something, it right? Is. A dash of oregano, a yeah. little bit of rosemary. Uh, this one's a, a dash of flannel, a little bit of roses. And so these came out one year, um, I'd say maybe five years ago at Quilt Market. Um, these patterns, and they're super cute on. And you make them with. Um, fat quarters and oh um flannel and so oh, i bought that's them that's cute so this will be mm. the inside and the outside of one hat isn't that pretty that's really cute and this will be let's see the inside and outside of the other hat cute and i like to wear hats oh, my head is too fat like I have too much hair, but my I have a big noggin. I never I do not wear hats very well. Mine is I, I mean I have bangs, and I know they they say old ladies shouldn't wear bangs, but I'm going to wear them till I got too much real estate up here. I <laughs> have to wear that's bangs. Me too. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> What's I tell? Flash, flash, flash like, my real estate. Your hair grow. 
<laughs> I'm like, no. Ain't nobody want to see that. But but I never know what to do with my bangs, but I still, I like to wear hats. You so. look cute in hats, though. So that's mm -hmm. there. Um, ooh. Ooh, ooh. Oh, I this like is Thai chip, so I, I can't really open it. This is uh, Lisa Bonjean, uh, Primitive Gatherings. This is all wool. This is gorgeous. And it is a, a table mat. The, it's actually quite large and I think it's 27 oops there we go 27 by 18 and a half and I have all of the wool look at that orange wool mm. oh my word oh well, I want to see that that's gorgeous isn't it look that's at, gorgeous. It's, it's got like a black modeling that's that is gorgeous really pretty I think I have that pattern but I don't have the fabric I think you know somebody who has a lot of wool stash mm. And we know where to get it too. We, it. we we do. We, yep. It's just about an hour north. Yeah. Uh, this is just a cute little um, candle mat, and it's it's pin cushions. And this is by Buttermilk Basin. Um, Farm Girl lives not too far from yeah. from Stacy West from Buttermilk Basin. Basin, and I am so jealous. I have a lot of her stuff. I do really you? like her patterns. I remember when she was new to the to the world, new to the apple cable. She was mm -hmm. up and coming, and um, she was on that shop hop virtual shop yeah, hop. Yeah. And Meg Hockey from Hop yes. uh, from Crabapple Hill was uh, befriended her. And yeah, yeah. They became pals. Yeah, they have. Well, I, and I love Meg Hockey, and so do you. You have stuff yeah. from her, and um, yeah, just everything she does, I, I want to have. It's, yeah. Um, this is. Oh, this is. Um, here, let me. Oh my gosh. There's a there's a bunch of threads here. I'm trying to do it without the glare. There's That's a bunch of threads and fun. wool. I don't know. Are I'm those well done? Them. They're. Uh, or is that DMC Paul Cotton? It's. It's not DMC, but it's yeah. It's a it's a pro cotton. It's a pro cotton, and Beautiful. and then just some wool. These wools, by the way, um, every single piece of this is from something I bought at Goodwill or Value Village and I washed it in hot water and dried it in a really hot dryer and felted it and most of them were coats but um wow. you ended up getting a lot of yardage yep for not a lot of money and so like on Sundays here if you go thrifting um there's a certain color of tag that is like a dollar 29 and so this red this burgundy red that I'm going to show you um was a lady of a a large size ladies quilt mm -hmm. <clears throat> or quilt a coat and I paid a dollar twenty nine and I probably ended up with maybe five wow. yards of excellently filtered wool. So uh this is from Oh my gosh you guys. Uh this is a table runner and I'm stitching on it. Um this is called American Rose and American Rose is a pattern that a lady named Marie Webster created. It was, it was probably, it was her first and most famous. Um, she was a quilter at the turn of the last century and she was the lady who wrote the very first book, the very first quilting book um, in America. And she also had a mail order. We think that this is fairly new. So think back into the early 1910s. Um, she had a mail order business where she would actually pre-cut patterns and or pre-cut fabric and she would mail out no, of, she kitted it up. She kitted. Well, oh she had gosh. all. She she would do everything. You could either just buy the pattern, you could buy it all kitted up, and the um, envelopes that she used to send those in are definitely collectors' items. But what was her name? Webster. Marie Webster. Um, there's there's the a OG. <laughs> the what? I'm sorry. The OG. The OG. The original gangster. Yeah. All right. Oh yeah, <laughs> she's the OG. Um, so her home is the Quilters Hall of Fame, and it's in Indiana, I believe. Oh really? So a I couple of three, is it three years ago? Maybe four years ago. So a really good friend of mine um, owns a company called Quilt Smart, and Quilt Smart um, creates pre-printed interfacing that helps you do quilting, uh, particularly for new quilters. Helps you quilt things that are normally very hard. So things like Lone Star, which is all on the bias, mm -hmm. um, and then mm -hmm. she kind of branched out. She she's a big Marie Webster fan, and she partnered with Marie Webster's granddaughter or great granddaughter I can't remember one of the, oh. one of the G's granddaughters and um, she's been releasing um, this interfacing so that you could do this applique um, Marie Webster all of her all of her patterns so I think there's maybe a dozen out now ten to a dozen hmm. anyway this was one of them and so I was working with Maddie uh, to make a replica of Marie Webster's original um, American Beauty Rose, which is in pinks and greens and uh, darker kind of fuchsia. fuchsia. You're yeah. talking my language. So. This, this is Lisa Pellet all day long. 
So if this ended up on my table, my feelings would not be hurt. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Anyway, so um, because I like working in wool, I wanted to translate the cotton pattern into wool, and that, that's what this is. And then um, I'm just kind of doing some fancy can stitches. You, you can. My arms aren't that long. I've just doing some I've fancy stitches arms. on this. And I put it on a black background, which is definitely not anything Marie Webster would have done. Her colors were a lot more fresh and pretty. Um, and Super so, pretty though. It looks, it's really pops right off of the black. It does. It's it's lovely. And and this is on a black flannel, not a piece of wool. A piece oh. of black wool this large would be expensive. Very expensive. So I just used a really nice quality um, black flannel, and which will also make it easier for me to quilt. So did I, you did you wash it first? No. Okay. So Marlene and I were talking a little bit about yeah. that. Stitching by the leg, and she. You, yeah. you, you know what I mean? So do you, so if you have a big wool applique piece, how do you finish it? What do you recommend, Lori? Um, well, I, I answered Marlene on that. So as a long arm quilter, I quilted a lot of different things. Wool is very heavy, particularly when you're doing wool applique and you've mm -hmm. got several layers stacked on there. It weighs a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and which, it's expensive too. And it, it's expensive as well. So I, it kind of depends on what you want it to look like when you're done. So if, she wanted it quilted, but she's not really interested in the quilting showing. She wants to showcase um, maybe her stitching or the applique. Mm -hmm. Then you you could put flannel on the back, although flannel does weigh more than just a nice calico, calico or, cotton. Mm -hmm. So what I recommended to her is if she wanted the quilting to show, and, and you can quilt it to where you're really popping out your applique too, it, it depends, then probably a, a high loft poly poly is going to be a lot uh, lighter weight than a cotton yeah. you could put a wool batting uh wool batting is actually lighter uh, in weight than um even the poly in the high left poly really it is i didn't know that and I um, thought it would have been and nice. you can you can get a little bit of loft with that too so if you're really trying to make things pop out you can do that um i would not put a flannel on the back um unless she was going to put it on a bed and she was really going to use it because it's just going to make it extremely heavy yeah flannel is heavy isn't it, it can um, be heavy um, I did recommend not putting, or if she wants just the stitching to lie flat, then yeah, go ahead and just put flannel on the back and don't put anything in between it. But your stitches are not going to show. Right. The, the quilting is not going to show if you do that. So it, it depends on it the depends. outlook that, or the outcome that you're looking for. So, um, oh golly, we may be here this all day. This is going to be like a two hour <laughs> video by the time we put it all together. Uh, this one, this looks like a start. Uh, I know there's more pieces in here somewhere. This is a start of a candle mat. That is a piece of black wool, and that is from a gentleman's blazer. And this is the rest of it. Uh, this is another buttermilk basin, and they're little pumpkins and sunflowers, which I love. That is cute. So that's the colors. These are quick, because you cut them, you don't need to hem them, you just do a real quick buttonhole stitch. They're, they're fun to do. Um, oh, I haven't looked at this in a long time, so. <laughs> I know, it's like, surprise, what's in this box? Check this out. You know, we have that, the vintage trailer phase going on. Look and that. that's, um, that was about this big, and it's just, it would make an adorable pincushion. Very cute. Uh, this is front porch quilts. This looks like it's also done, this is embroidery, um, on Oh, so it's all button hole stitch. It's but all button hole stitch. What do they call that pattern in quilting? This is like that's an apple core, apple core, apple core. Um, this one, this company, I don't, I'm not sure if they're in um, in production anymore. It's called Mountain Mountain Patchworks. I have a lot of these, and they're tiny, tiny quilts. And they came with the fabric, and they came with, this was the first time I saw those itty bitty buttons from the button company, the ones that are like. Oh, Jeffco? Uh, no, it's it's called, it's a button company. Red button company? Oh, no. Oh, not just another button company. Or, or it might have been just another. Anyway, it has tiny buttons on it, and um, it has an interesting way of quilting this. Let's see if I can describe it. Basically, you, you do running stitches, but um, you stitch the seam down so that you're quilting it as you're so you a oh, quilt as you go kind of a pattern. it's kind of a quilt as you go but you don't necessarily put anything behind them but what it does is it stitches down the the seam so hmm. it's you 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 do it and your seams out flat and then you stitch it down so that that seam doesn't go anywhere so like stitch in the ditch not kind really of? no you're you're outside of the ditch okay 
Oh, oh, I have to work on one and then show everybody. There's just some miscellaneous fabric. Uh, this, oh gosh, um, this is one of my ideas of things to do. <laughs> so this is just a piece of wool and it just has some, um, uh, what do they call it, French knots. Yep. Or no, actually those are colonial knots. Colonial knots are easier than French knots and you get the same result. Airborne. Uh, airborne is a wonderful thing, but this is what I did. I wanted to stitch something that, and then stitch this around the airborne because my scissors and needles and everything fit exactly in one of these. Huh. And I thought, what a great way just to drop that in my purse and not worry about my curved right. scissors poking a hole in all anything. Yeah, all the stuff. So that's, that was an idea. And then I was going to put a little, um, a rounded thing on the top so it could be its own little pin cushion. So that's that's what that You're is. You're so clever. Um, doo -doo -doo. Mm. Oh. Um, so I forgot to ask <laughs> what you. What you got in there? I forgot to. Um, so we have the Sew Expo coming up in Puyallup at the end of February, beginning of March. Have you been? No. Do you know about it? Uh, yes, I see it come through my Facebook feed, I think. Okay, so I've been going for years and years. And Sew Expo oh. has quilting, it has cross stitch, it has... It has cross stitch? Um, I've seen a couple different cross stitch, usually only one oh. or two booths. It's mostly quilting. But um, there's also vendors that bring in, you know, things like, oh, you've got special lighting or the, the, the special glasses, all sorts of things. And you never really know what's going to be there. Uh, fabric companies come, um... Long arm quilting companies may or may not come. It, it kind of changes over the years. But um, is like there was a, this one's by Helen Gibb. But this was the same booth that had the gal that does the silk uh, embroidery. The strawberries where I got the strawberries. Or no, I got the acorns and you got the strawberries. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What yeah. was her name? I don't remember. Anyway. I showed it on a couple of videos ago. So they had, they had shared a booth or maybe their booths were close to each other. And this is called a ribbon bracelet. And it came in a little kit. So there was a pattern. And in there came a spool of silk thread. Have you ever worked with silk thread? No. Feel how fine that is. Ooh, that's so tiny in terms of gauge. That's a hundred weight. Wow. So then it came with these little... I can't get there. So little f silk flowers and buttons, etc. Wow. <clears throat> and basically, you sew all of this to this piece of silk ribbon. <laughs> Hold on. Go, go, oh, get your arms. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm making this for my granddaughter, although she may not get it because I'm really loving this. I was going to say, I'll be your granddaughter. <laughs> And, and so basically you finish it and you, you've got it's beautiful. It's a, a little bracelet. And so I was so excited when I, I'm almost done. It's, it's one of those, maybe this should go in my mm -hmm. whip pile. Yep. Um, stitch nine. So I went and bought <laughs> here. <laughs> I went and bought a bunch of more ribbon to make more of them. All the goodies, right? All the goodies. All the goodies. All the, yes. And that's what that is. Don't you love the surprises when you yes. find a box of something you're like, I see that all the time on Instagram. Somebody says, I thought I lost that pattern. <laughs> I thought I gave it away or I sold it. And then you find a bag or a box or something in the corner. And you realize, huh, I still have it. Uh, so this is just a book by uh, Bear Roots who does embroidery. Very similar to Meg Hawking and, and such. And it's just, it's this really cute book of different. That is adorable. Different little projects. And see, look, there's like pink heaps. And, and it's mostly embroidery. Yep. Pink, pink keeps and, um, but look how she did that. Clever packaging. Yeah, very clever packaging. And it's really cute. I think there was something in particular that was in here that I, I wanted, why I bought that. I don't remember. Oh, it might've been this. I wanted to make this for my granddaughter. It's like a little purse and it's all embroidered and patchwork. Very Holly Hobby looking. So those of you of a certain age will know who that is. <laughs> who is that? <laughs> You're not much that different of a certain age. <laughs> I'm probably a couple years younger. That's not oh, much, though. Actually, I think you're four years younger. Yeah? Yeah. That's a couple-ish. Yeah, that's a couple-ish. That's a couple-ish. A couple-couple-ish. A couple-couple. Um, this is also Lisa Bonjean, and it was... Um, oh, if you ever sign up for one of her Block of the Months, um, they're wool, typically wool projects, and they're not cheap. 
you know, but Lo is expensive and mm -hmm. she does a beautiful job. She's an mm -hmm. awesome designer that she always throws in a little something special in your, your, your monthly thing. And so for this one, um, actually when you were done with it, you had another wall hanging, another quilt. So I don't know if you can see from the pattern, but what they are is there's these tiny little blocks and they're flowers. And I'll show you a couple of the finished blocks. Oh my gosh. So these what? are these are wool on flannel. <laughs> and and these they, are adorable. They came free and and then What? They, they were free? Yeah, so the little pattern. This is the surprise. This is the surprise. So every month you get this little freebie, or That's at least for really the cute. one that I was working on. She does something different every time, so uh, I don't want to set her up, but that when you put them all together, see they're all there's. I think yeah. There's actually, so this is the inside layer, the, right? right there. And it says to plant a flower is to believe in tomorrow. Oh, right. Yep. Okay. Um, oh, and then just a nice little book of needles. Wow. So that's that one. Oh. I've got one more thing in here. So I was talking last video about Cosmo Thread. This is Cosmo Thread. And it comes on a spool. So very much like the Aurifil that you got. Mm -hmm. Except this is actual embroidery floss versus like a cotton pearl. So I think now they're on skeins. They're on. Well, they always did both. But they, they did these oh, for a while. Right. They discontinued those eventually, didn't they? Yeah, they discontinued okay. them. I although so. I have quite a large stash of them. Mm -hmm. Um... I don't remember how many, how many yards, how many yards, but it's a lot. Yeah, it it's is. a lot. And it's, it's two strands. So for those of you who mostly stitch on something that needs two strands, you're not having to, it's two strand. It's, it's two oh, strands. It so you, sure is. You can, you can separate it. I mean, it's just like any other floss and you can separate but how it. How convenient is that? And you just, you know, roll off whatever you need. Cut and, and go. Cut and go. And it's really high quality. Um, it's Cosmo and it was, it's produced out of Japan and they do have a really nice, um, textile industry. Yeah, they do. So. Some of the Japanese stitchers, if you ever want to see them oh, on Instagram. Particularly and, quilting. Yes. And they're, it's meticulous. Like the finishing mm -hmm. is perfect mm -hmm. and well stitched. Um, you don't typically see really large quilts coming out of Japan. I mean, you will if you look at the stuff that's from the Japanese quilt market, which is an international Did quilt market. Did you see the one with all the little geishas on there? It's yes. Like, it must have been a thousand. Wow, that was amazing. They're, they are amazing. There's one that came out last year. I think it was it was either best of show or it was first prize. And it's a lighthouse. And then it's the light that goes out like that. And each, I mean, the 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 beams of light are all these tiny little patchwork squares it's it's hard to describe wow. but it's, it's beautiful you could probably just look online if you look for best of show or best of show or um international international japanese international quilt market it's on my bucket list of things um my son took he did it before he started high school so i think he has five years of japanese and he did international baccalaureate level japanese so um i promised him a trip to japan if he would interpret for me <laughs> And I would take him during quilt market. He had to go during quilt market, which he wasn't totally thrilled about. But um, so, do you want to? Maybe we'll. Um, do you want to do this? Where are we? I think we're at about an hour. Uh, yeah. Well. Oh, probably more because this one here is about fifty minutes, and we had one before this. <laughs> have to do do we call it? We will save this for next time. Let's save that one for next time. Okay. And then um, we will insert a clip of. Lori checking out yes some nice stash yeah. stash dive we're, we're, we're going to check out Lisa's drawers yes okay and then um so we'll, we'll insert that clip right here we're live all right so you've always wondered what's in my drawers we're gonna take a look <laughs> let's just start at the top <laughs> let's just start at the top oh, this one so in here is, we all know I'm a painter, right? Two. I have just a bunch of painting stuff, some gold leafing. Ooh. Right, I've done some gold leafing before. This, look at this pattern. This is cute. Got the wood for this too. Oh, that is adorable. Yeah. 
So does that come like this, like a top, and then it has a little door that yep. opens? It's this, this is the top here. Uh -huh. And it's just a like a bottom oh, round and uh, the top. And then I think you have to, I don't remember how the gum drop goes on there. Um, so previous paintings, I always like to keep little things that help you with, you know, perspective. You can use this whether you're, if you're designing or you're quilting or you're drawing, anything like that. So you're getting like the depth and the, the mm -hmm. distance and that sort of thing? Yep. Ooh, those look pretty. Mm -hmm. These are some patterns. I have, I, um. Oh, here, let me help you. <laughs> This is a little bit of espresso. Oops. And um, so this is a silk weaver. That is so pretty. Isn't that pretty? This I is love that color. This is called. This is a 36 count almond. Yeah, that's a really pretty one. It's interesting. So it's kind of showing up as a, a really light taupey color with some green in it on my camera, but it's really more. It is kind of an almond color, but it does have that just hint of green modeling. It's so pretty. Yeah, it's much more golden yes. in real life. I oh, there, there, there's a better for you. Okay. Yeah, if I change the the angle and I get a different okay. uh, different color. So I'm gonna keep going until I run out of short storage space on here. So this is vintage buttercream. This is the old vintage buttercream. Oh, that's a lot lighter. Yeah, it is. You cannot have too much buttercream. I know. And there's right? that just, no such thing. Whether it's cakes or cross stitch. Agree, agree. This is vintage. This is bisque. Ooh. It's super. This is just really a nice creamy. What color would you say this is? Like eight forty four. If you were talking about DMC, I'm not as good on the DMCs. Ecru. It's it's a nice. Um, it's a nice ecru. Yeah, it's not too warm, but it's it. Um, it's, it's just a nice basic color. Ooh, is this a pair? This is a limited run um, oh. that bought a stash and load of Lakeside. It doesn't have a... Doesn't have, yeah. It doesn't have a name. But I have a limited run too. That's a really pretty color. Yeah. So you have a lot of 36 and 40 in here. Is that your preferred? Uh, is 40 your preferred? Um, it you depends. Have you know, it depends. I would say that sometimes you want 32. Like I, have, I might yeah. have another drawer of 28 and 32. You just might? Just saying, yep. This is Silvery Moon, so <laughs> it depends on if I want to manage the scale of the project to make yeah. it something that's reasonable to, to frame. And sometimes if you make something that's on 40 count, you lose some of the detail right. if it's too small. Um, oh, this is springtime. Oh, look at that. Isn't that pretty? That sweet? does look like springtime, doesn't mm -hmm. it? And I have a crosswing collection of the it's not Cardinals. What is on there? can't remember looks like and it's a vintage springtime the, yeah it looks like vintage springtime do they still make this i think so oh, i'm gonna have to look for that ask ask um, i really like that one. so look at that one. Ooh, that's my vintage pearl barley that's this is that's, probably my yeah. favorite to stitch on i love this that's one. the pearl barley i mean the other one we're looking at was much much lighter well it doesn't have the vintage on it right <clears throat> it doesn't have the modeling this is oh. this is a difference on the vintage um now this Ooh. is vintage pecan butter. Oh, no, pear. I'm sorry. And mm -hmm. I bought this for um, a Scarlet House design, and this was very gray mm -hmm. compared to a different um, dye lot that we just saw at Acorns and Threads mm -hmm. that was much greener. Yeah, the one I've just purchased is a lot greener than this, but this is really pretty. Yep. This is um, okay. This is antique ivory. This is just Weigart. Huh. But I tell you, this I think we're going to try and over dye on. Yeah. Right? So we did some dyeing before on a white. It definitely comes out different when you have a different base fabric, it, right? It does. And this one, um, regardless of the name that it's called, to me, it looks like a pecan color or mm -hmm. a almond color rather than, uh, what were you saying? It's a antique ivory. This this looks like the an the ivory is very antique. Right. It looks like a, can a tusk <laughs> of an elephant or something. Yeah, it's, you know? it's been uh, discolored. Yeah, but it's pretty. Oh, Ooh. this is Regency. So this is um, oh. picture this plus Regency, uh -huh. but you oh. definitely see a little hint of peach, peach in yes, there, but mostly green. Where I Legacy is that. mostly gold. This is this is Isn't really pretty? pretty. I think 
you know, I have a piece that they're, they're calling it something else. They're not calling it Regency, but I think when I got my um, fabric for the Brenda Gervais, the box with the Santas. Um, yeah, the um, that's the color Tannenbaum. Yeah, the Tannenbaum. That's what my fabric that it came with looked like, and that's why I went and picked a different fabric because I didn't really imagine it being on a green. Oh, I think it'd be pretty on a green though, green, gold, and red. So this is like this is vintage tundra. Ooh, definitely a gray, right? Mm -hmm. It has a little tiny bit of modeling on it. Here's some more pearl barley scraps. I don't tend to throw a lot of scraps away. This is platinum. I don't throw anything away. <laughs> Even this if you're is, just down to scissor file right, size, right? This is Weigart. This uh -huh. is a great, to me, this is a great go-to sampler fabric. Yeah, I could see that. This is interesting. The hand on this one is, um, it's a lot uh, more firm. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes, definitely. It hasn't been processed, been washed, right? Yeah. yeah. No. Here's another one of those. Okay, so this one is XG Design, and this is... 46 count. I have some extra designs that I didn't bring today. I thought I'd save them for another one. Yeah, isn't Ooh. that? Look at the dramatic nature of that. Oh, that is so stunning. Isn't that pretty? And then here's a, um, I gotta keep the tags separated on this one. This one is a kind of a lemony color, but uh -huh. look at the variegation in that. Yeah, this is, I could see, remember those samplers that I bought and I don't remember the names with the roses, the two ones that came out that were kind of green, yeah. yellow and green? Yeah. That, I, I didn't bring those with me. Um, that I just got acorns and threads. They would look stunning on a color like this. Oh, yes. Yep. Yep. And I have a room in um, the sister's house that is this pale yellow. Pale, it's just, she just calls it pale yellow. This is a 56 count. Oh, have you, have you dived into anything larger than 40 yet? Um, I'm stitching. I have, I have pieces, but I haven't started using yeah. them yet. <laughs> oh, this is navy bean. That's another one I like. Mm -hmm. I have done 46 count. My um, Snooty Parrots, the oh, Barbara okay. Anna does on, mm -hmm. on 46 count, but I haven't gone any higher than that. 36 count, mystery. This looks like it's just a, a wide grab. It might be dirty, dirty or khaki. Mm -hmm. It kind of looks like a khaki. Okay, so here's frozen leaves. This is a extra design. And this one now, is this looks kind of bluish on my oh, my camera, blue. but it's really more of a true um, yeah. This pale, is blue. Green. That's green. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And then thirty-five count. Oh, this is eighteenth-century red. Oh, that isn't that great. That looks really similar to um, Aztec red. It, it, it absolutely does. It's it's got slightly more blue to it, so it's, it's showing up more raspberry. And the Aztec red definitely is has more of like the brick tone, although it's, yeah. it's still a true red. So this is an R&R, &R, but look at how this is sat folded for a long time. Mm -hmm. Or I don't know if they fold it. I'm not sure. It has a little bit of a different, like it shows the fold lines. Oh. And I don't know. I think if you uh, soaked it a little bit and then laid it out flat and ironed it, you might, it might let the, the dye travel a little bit to where it would cover oh, those up. That's a good idea. So here's the Lakeside 40 count coral. I have never seen oh, this one wow. before. I don't think I've seen a coral Isn't either. Isn't that pretty? It's showing up pink, but it is definitely a true coral. Let me see if I can change my lighting here to... Well, it nope, is a pinky pink. coral color. This is a 40 count pear, yeah. right? That's what... Um, I think we're both doing Andale. No, you're doing... I'm, I'm doing Andale. I'm, I'm, pear, doing, I'm doing a vintage patina. Yeah. Here's vintage lentil. So I do have a lot of greens, too. Mm -hmm. That one's definitely... I think I'm going to already shown a piece of that. I like it when um, the greens, particularly the lentil, where it has the peach and the tan and the green together. I yeah. think that's really pretty. Complimentary. It, it gives a lot of interest to a piece without, you know, jumping in your face. So these are the... These are the, the um, the fabrics for the Blackbird designs, the strawberries, mm -hmm. deck the halls. Yep, Oops, sorry. Yep. There are these. Those go in there. And then I think this is pretty much just bits and pieces. Oh, this is, I don't know what that is. This is, I used it, it's like powder pink. And I think this Ooh. is just a Zweigart. And I'm yeah. using this for a hands on, hands across. The so seat are you design. signed up for any of the, the, you are signed up for Dying to Stitch. What are you signed up for this year? The for the retreats? For the clubs. Oh, for the clubs. Yeah, the, the two Dying to Stitch clubs. Yeah. I, right I'm now. doing the strawberries this year. I yeah. did I did two or three last year. I forget which ones. The prim yeah. and the... Well, cool. That's just one drawer, Lisa. I know. <laughs> I, might, I might be a little bit of a fabric hoarder. So you saw some paint stuff and you saw some fabric. So that's it, what's in two of my drawers. Two of your drawers. How many drawers do you have? 
don't know. I have a lot of stuff in here. Well, don't you know what? Me. This no, this is not judging. <laughs> this is like woohoo. So, um, so I think this is going to be a regular segment on both of our our channels that yeah. we'll, we'll get to kind of dive into the the crannies and crevices of. <laughs> What's in your drawers? <laughs> I don't even care how you say that. Uh, of of uh, uh, our our craft room. There you go. <laughs> so awesome. Well, we we got through two drawers. That's great, and um, we'll see if we can slice this in so everybody can get a peek inside. Sounds um, good. What's going on in 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 our lives and our craft lives? Okay. Thanks. Bye. Now, um, now that you've seen what's in my drawers, there's really no mystery, right? <laughs> No surprise. Well, you know that, that Susie Reno showed what was in her drawers. Oh, she did. She showed her drawers in her drawers. Yeah, she showed her drawers in her drawers. Oh, so, yeah, this, this, is is my, my, this is my craft drawers. Yeah. Uh, um, so, we want to talk a little bit about what's upcoming. What okay. do you think? Our grand yeah. tour? Yeah. Take, oh. take it away. Take Lisa. it away. Okay. So, we are going on a, a retreat extravaganza coming up. And in, yes. in April, we're heading down to Phoenix first mm -hmm. and um, going to the Stitch... Stitch Nanigans. Stitch Nanigans, McKenna's yes. Retreat. Yeah, there's nothing but shenanigans going on with McKenna. Uh, oh, yes. <laughs> it should be a good time. It, In yes. fact, I don't know that you'll see many social media posts because probably you won't be able to see them. No, they won't be PC. No, no. <laughs> Uh, we're, we're doing that. And then, so we have planned to go to the Midwest Cross Stitch Retreat that Michelle mm -hmm. Rudy... Uh, puts on so we've faithfully gone since May of last year. We've gone to a two mm -hmm. now, right? Mm -hmm. uh, May and October, we're mm -hmm. going back. Yep. This is the one with Priscilla and Chelsea, right? Mm -hmm. And so we, I have always wanted to go to Spring Green Sampler in Spring Green, Wisconsin. So we thought, well, I mean, we can make it work so we could go in a couple days early and then drive over to the retreat. And then we saw that the Dying to Stitch retreat was going on the weekend before, so. The stars aligned. Yes, they the did. Stars we, aligned. We were worried. It, it was it was touch and go there for a little bit. Yeah, we were like nervous. <laughs> Do you think we're gonna get in? I don't know. We're gonna get in. What's what's plan B? <laughs> yeah, we talked to Donna Ray first. Like, what what do we need to do? Like, what's the magic with this? You just gotta submit your form. That's yeah, on time. Right? On time. That's, that was the key. <laughs> so, uh, so we are going to the Dines to Stitch Retreat. I just saw today that Kelly and Mama Joan are going. <gasps> oh, cool. I know. I Carol Saltbot Stitchers going. Oh, Carol is awesome. A lot of Instagram. Programmers who, um, you know, they have posted uh, Mod Mozart's going, kind of sampler oh. stitchers going. Like, there's a whole group that goes together. Oh, cool. So they're going, so we're going to fly to mm -hmm. Virginia mm -hmm. and stay probably an extra day. Somebody yeah. said to go to Williamsburg, make sure we do oh, that. So okay. then we're going to fly to Milwaukee mm -hmm. and drive to Spring Green and mm -hmm. stay in the apartment above At Country Sampler. <laughs> Country Sampler for a few days and then we're gonna drive. It's about four hours away. Four yeah, it's four, four and a half hours. We're gonna drive from, from the Country Sampler uh, Spring Green to uh, Chaska, Minnesota. Yeah, to the Midwest Retreat. To the Midwest Cross Retreat. So it is definitely going to be Lori and Lisa's great adventure. The grand tour of the Cross Stitch Retreat. Yes. With a little quilting thrown in because. Oh, yes. yes. Oh, yes. We yes. both like to quilt. So yeah. I will have to bring an uh, extra bag. Well, I, I gave, I think I told you, I gave my daughter both um, when she was visiting last and her bag was falling apart um, when she flew in from, from Tucson. And so I gave her both of my my uh luggage so i have to go buy new luggage and I'm like, <laughs> darn, I have darn. To buy new luggage. and um so i've done this before you you have to strategize so you try to pack everything in in the smaller bag that fits in the larger bag so that when you come back you have two yes yes and you yes. have an empty one that you, you can fill up and, and then there's always usps right you can that's you, right you can pick it up you can you can uh we so we could just make a box. We can get a box and then make a handle, duct duct tape it, and we could check that. We could do that. Yeah, mm. we could do that. We'll have to figure it out. So stay tuned. We'll post some stuff on yeah on Instagram. I'm sure maybe some. I don't know if we'll vlog it, but yeah, sort of like Thelma and Louise. <laughs> Lisa except, Lori. except for the end part. Right, we're not driving <laughs> off a cliff. No, 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 no we're not. The, the credit card might go off the cliff, but yeah, we're, we're, we're going to stay here. Yeah, so um, but yeah, I'm super excited. I've never been to Virginia. I haven't either. I mean, I've been to the East Coast, but I have not been to that area, and it's definitely an area that um, that I've always wanted to visit. Mm -hmm. So. 
so we're so excited. And I'm excited to meet different people. So <laughs> the different retreats, you meet different people. Mm -hmm. I, the first retreat I went to was a Mirabilia retreat, and mm -hmm. I love. I mean, I have some great friends, friendships mm -hmm. that I built there. And then um, going to the Midwest, you meet different people mm -hmm. there. Then uh, I went to. New Jersey last year too, and mm -hmm. that was fun. You meet different people. Some of those people will be at the Arizona retreats. So yeah, yeah, it's fun. And it is. I mean, I I feel fortunate that we can do this, right? Kind of in a time in our life when we can, when when um, you have a lot of kids at home, it's different, yeah. you know. Yeah. So so yes, definitely feel fortunate. So we're gonna bring you along, and uh, mm -hmm. and share share mm -hmm. our good fortune with you. So. Yes. Yes. Awesome. That's it. I think so. So this is Lori McClary, Tech Silas. Lisa Smith, Kindred Stitcher. Uh, signing out. Thanks, you guys. Bye. Bye.